Not all children are smart and clever. Got that? Kids are like any other group of people. A few winners, a whole lot of losers. <laughs> there are a lot of loser kids out there who simply aren't going anywhere. And you can't save them all. You can't save them all. You gotta let them go. You gotta cut them loose. You gotta stop overprotecting them because you're making them too soft. Today's kids are way too soft. It might be the most fiercely debated issue in parenting, and it has affected every fabric of life today, from politics to playing in the sandbox. The feeling from many a corner that we coddle our kids far too much. We treat them like little fragile snowflakes and turn them into something less than they could be. And on the other side of that discourse, a changing society demands we overprotect kids to ensure they get every chance in life to succeed. George Carlin would not have been pleased at all. Welcome into Midpoint, parenting expert and founder of TheDailyAffair.com, Stacey Nelkin, and known for her work with teens and their parents as the teen dating mechanic, Lisa Jander. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks Hi, for thanks having for having me. Stacey, I'm going to start with you here today. Come on, sure. aren't we just raising a bunch of soft kids here and a bunch of fragile little snowflakes? Stop treating the kids like this. Give them a little <laughs> tough love for crying out loud. Come on. You know, I think in, in many ways we are. I have to say I catch myself sometimes being guilty of that, and it's not good. Um, I think we are in a society where it is very child-centric, and, you know, a lot of parents, including myself, and I stop myself when I do this, put the kids' needs way before our own needs or ask the kids, would you like to do this? Should we do this? No, I'm sorry. You're going to do this. You know, um, they're, they're, we defer to the kids too much. We give them a little too much power. So, um, you know, never mind the helicopter parenting. There are also these bulldozer parents who are pushing everything out of the way for their kids. And it's very dangerous, and it raises a bunch of very, very uh, weakened children, very dependent. We want the children to be independent, not dependent. That's the goal. Lisa, even when it comes to the teenagers, isn't it fair? Come on. And again, you, I know you've heard this six million times, but I'm going to have to go back to it. When I was younger and when I was a teenager, you know, mom and dad didn't do this to me, and I got smacked and I got all this, whatever it is. But it does seem as if <laughs> that a lot of the things that are happening happening today with kids who become adults, who become voters, who become business people, they're just being treated so soft and hands off and the parents don't give them any discipline whatsoever that that lives with them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the big things that I see a lot is the extremes. There's there's really a happy medium, and any extreme is never a good thing, especially in parenting. And taking into account the factors of the parent's personality, the uh, culture that we live in, the kids themselves, their personality, those are really, really important things. And, and I would say the top three things to really look for in parenting all across the globe would be safety, responsibility, and self-sufficiency. I have a thing with my kids about independence, and independence kind of turned into a word that, that really talked more in their minds about freedom and defying authority. So we didn't really try to achieve independence as much as self-sufficiency. That was really key. And I'm not seeing a lot of that right now, but it is happening in some areas for sure. All right, now, safety, responsibility, and self-sufficiency. Uh, self Isn't it possible that parents can do that and give kids those without coddling them through life and making them feel as if they're completely entitled to everything every single second of the day, which I gotta tell you, it seems like a lot of kids are. Yeah, yes, absolutely, and it's key to back off. Um, I call it airbag parenting, which is either deploying after the fact or tailgating. Uh, tailgating is, you know, constantly telling them what to do, when to do it. You know, it's important to tell a four-year-old to, to tie their shoes. It's not appropriate to tell a 17-year-old to do that, and you're going to get some backlash. The thing that I, I try to do in coaching parents is this. You start when they're infants. You tell them and help them do the things they can't do for themselves. They can't feed themselves. They can't change their diaper. You do those things. As they grow, you shift into 
teaching them how to do things for themselves. And by the time they're a little bit older and more mature, then you want to make sure they are doing it for themselves. And that's where I think a lot of parenting falls apart. Parents don't want to let go of the control. They want to make sure it's done their way. So they do it and then they ground their kids or, or whatever. And it's really creating a lack of uh, self self-assurance and capability for these kids. Stacy, isn't it just that at times we have to let the kids, come on, fall down a little bit, get a little dirty sometimes, don't worry about the bike, don't worry about the training wheels. And again, I know I'm sounding like an archaic individual here, but come on, let them go ahead and let them just go ahead and, and have some fun. I tell you what, Lisa, I'm gonna throw this to you though. Shouldn't we just let people have some fun, let the kids have some fun and get dirty every now and then? That seems to be the biggest problem, that parents treat them like little porcelain dolls. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was, my, my kids were six and eight, we moved to the country. We had two acres on a lake and they did all kinds of fun stuff that I did as a kid. That's really tough to find now. And, you know, you, you look at some of these parents that are overprotecting their kids in such a dramatic way. It's almost embarrassing as a culture to see it. Yeah, they can skin their knee. Safety is key. You don't want them ever to be hurt mentally, emotionally, physically, but let them get dirty. Let them have some fun. Let them climb a tree and go down a slide. It's just amazing how many parents won't allow that anymore. I only got a minute left. We just saw some video that rolled in here right now that showed teenagers doing things you might not want your kids to do, like smoking cigarettes, like doing marijuana, doing different drugs. So there is a line. I mean, you do. It, it's the strictness. It would really seem that you've got to you got to start being, you can't be their friend. Am I right on this that as a parent, you just can't be a kid's friend? You got to be something else? Well, I would have to say you can be both. You can actually be both. Parenting is always first and foremost. And once you're a parent and you've satisfied those requirements, if you will, and making sure you're safe, they're responsible, and they're self-sufficient, you can always be their friend in addition to that. It's great to get in the, in the sandbox and play with your kid and, and be their friend. That's not parenting. That's playing. And that's okay. But as long as the parenting always comes first. Cannot let you get away without asking you this. Unfortunately, Stacy left us due to technical difficulties. So, Lisa, you're the only one I'm going to have to get an answer to this on. 68% of American parents think spanking is not only good, but essential to child rearing. Did you spank your kids? Oh, spanking is a topic that's going to go on forever and ever. And you know what? It's really interesting. When I coach parents, that is not for me to decide, and that's a debate. Um, unfortunately, what I think happens a lot, spanking becomes a kind of punishment that is can be very severe and very unhealthy. Appropriately done, I see the evidence of that you know spanking can be something that can correct and modify behavior, but not to the degree that it's ever a unhealthy, uh, especially if the parent is doing that in anger. Never is that okay. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. We're all out of time. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We'll join this debate once again. Take care. Stick around right here on Midpoint. We question everything.